out here making a video today about uh, fixing this planter. Well, things around planting. Um, I made a video about basically the flat tire is what I've got. is my problem on the planter. And I made a video about it before, mostly so I could remember exactly how I changed these tires out. It was a couple of years ago. And um, i since learned to do it a little better than I did it a couple of years ago, but I had to go back and look at the video to see what I did. So this time around, I'll make a video so I can remember I'm going to have to change these tires again eventually. In this case, there's four lift cylinders, four lift tires. One, two, three, four. And I was planting the corn. It's a whole other story. Uh, it was late at night, early in the morning, and I uh, finished up ahead of the rain. And I looked back, and I'm like, oh, that tire's flat. I guess I'm glad I didn't see it earlier. Maybe I wish I had, but it was dark. You can barely see. There's lights on tractors and stuff. But anyway, back to the point of the video. What had happened was um, the tire stem, a rock got in here. You can see rocks get in here all the time. And damaged stuff. We pick rocks, we do the best we can, but can't always get there. So to get it off, um, here's the process I followed. You raise it all the way up, the tractor, on the lift cylinders, and there's four lift cylinders, one on each wheel, and then there's this lockout, you know, for transport. Well, you take the lockout off the side with the bad tire, and over here, you can see the cylinders resting on that lockout, and there's a bolt holding it in place. So all the weight is now on that lockout. And then in the tractor, you put the circuit, the lift cylinder circuit, in float, so there's no pressure on these cylinders. Um, and just prior to doing that, you got to put blocking under the end where you want to take it off, cribbing. And then there's a jack bottle jack under there doesn't have to be a particularly big one but um and i raise it up and you take all the pressure off that tire and then you can get the tire out and there's a little sprocket assembly that goes to the the chain and then there's a chain around the uh it gets put on the, the hub of the of the tire a couple things of note on this there's a, uh, remember, I should have flipped this around first. Sorry about that. Shaky video cam. There's a set screw right on the side of that locking collar. Make sure you back that out before you try to take these bolts out. Basically, there's a, a bolt that goes through. It's a female thread there, and a bolt goes through this hole down here, you know, on either side. Well, this side, one of them came off pretty, you know, with a cheater bar and a wrench. It's a 1 and 3 sixteenths, maybe 30 millimeter, but I use 1 and 3 sixteenths wrench. The one on the left side, I snapped the wrench with the, you know, I had a five foot cheater bar on it. And I thought, are they reverse threads? I called the deer guy, he says, no, they're not reverse threads. And then he tells me, Oh, there's Loctite on those from the factory. I go, yeah, I thought there might have been uh, Loctite. But, so I ended up heating it up. And then I finally got it off. So that was a, not frustrating, but just, anyway, be aware. It could have Loctite on it. You might have to heat it up. And then putting the thing back in is just in reverse. You, uh, you know, get the tire. You kind of have to wedge it up. You use pry bars to get the holes to line up, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, we've been dodging, it's been pretty wet here. There's 90 acres, 92 acres in this field. I've still got 30 more to go. I've planted, you know, like I said, two thirds of it, but it rained last night, maybe a third of an inch. Um, I'm hoping to plant tomorrow this final 30 acres. Oh, I really need to get a 12, I really want to get a 12 row planter. The six row, there's just not enough time to do what needs to get done, especially in organic. Uh, I've got to prep the soil 
and dad's been a huge help. He's done all that tillage with the field cultivator right before I plant. And then immediately I plant into it. Um, and then right after that, within three days, we tine weed. So the tine weeders held up well. The hitch, a couple things on this. This tractor needs some hitch adjustment. And I've got to change a couple hoses out here that got snagged up and, uh, and um, tore up pretty good last night before the rain. So basically the tine weeder is a blind cultivation. This unfolds, it's 30 feet wide. It's a great tool, I really like it. It's really useful. And you can adjust the angle of those tines to go deeper or shallower or more aggressive. So I planted my corn a little over two inches deep. So I set these tines maybe an inch deep, a rough approximation. Three days after planting, I'll go over to try to get rid of any weeds. And then shortly after emergence, I'll do another blind pass cultivating. I've had big problems this spring with my ag leader auto steer in the sense that it cannot find the streams, the signals from Wis, uh, Wisconsin cores, the, the, the GPS signal. And the ag leader tech guy and ag leader itself Ag leader hasn't been any help. They don't return calls. And it's just confusing as to what's going on. I think I have a Wi-Fi signal, but I can't find it. But somehow I still have the ability to do reduced accuracy GPS. So what that means is, obviously, all these rows are 30 inches apart within the six, but it won't hold a straight line. So when I come back to row cultivate, I'm going to have to do most of it by hand in the beans and the corn. And then my cheat rows, where one six row unit abuts another six row unit, those rows in between can be anywhere from 14 inches to 40 inches. And so there's gonna be gaps and I'm gonna to have to set my sweeps on, on the row cultivator really narrow, especially on the outside ones, and I'm just gonna miss weeds. And I'm going to have weeds this year because we've got a dry day here. Today it can dry out. And then Friday is supposed to be dry. Part of the day Saturday is supposed to be dry. Today's Thursday. And then uh, it's supposed to rain for five days. So I'm trying to get as much this, you know, blind cultivating, but there's going to be weeds. Um, oh, I drove back past the uh, one of the, the field with peas in it. Looks really good. They're starting to flower. The white flowers are up. I'll make a video maybe about that. It's really cool to see. The oats look really good. They're coming up with the clover underneath. It's a nice day. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, on the next one.